Hello friends. Thank you so much for coming back and visiting my channel. Not only are you supporting a small YouTube channel, but you're also helping me to one day be able to buy all the chips, lime, and Valentina hot sauce, the black label, that my little heart desires. Until I get an ulcer and can no longer have any of that. All right. So today I wanted to talk to you about shipped shopping. Shipped, not okay? Ship shopping is a delivery service now owned by Target. So I wanted to talk about what kind of side jobs or survival jobs I have been doing to maintain my entrepreneur, creative, artistic, acting life. This survival job has been a blessing for me. It's been the best side gig slash survival job that I have ever had. So I don't want to keep you waiting. And as you can tell, I am not wearing the typical ship shopper merchandise. I'm not about that life anymore. So you want to be a ship shopper in 2022. There have been a lot of updates to ship shopping um, in the previous year. I feel like the corporation itself went through a lot of growth like huge growth. They've been improving the app and the shopping experience and the customer experience a lot. This is gonna be a video of how to get started as a ship shopper and be successful at it. I signed up for Shipped about three years ago when I moved to Albuquerque. I didn't have as many orders and I couldn't really make it a part-time, full-time side gig. I went back to doing shipped on a part-time basis about a year and a half ago, but like pretty consistently. And it's been great. I know this is what people really want to know. How much money can you make doing shipped? Well, it really depends where you're located and how saturated the market is. For example, I have seen people bragging on the Facebook Ship Shopper Lounge how they make so much money in like parts of Florida during the pandemic 2020 or other areas of the country where it's super busy. I have seen people bragging about them making like a couple hundred dollars a day. I think somebody posted that they were making like a couple thousand dollars per week in the San Francisco Bay Area, which makes sense. Here in Albuquerque, it really depends. I set a goal every day to make X amount of money. So I will set a goal to make a little over $100. And I usually make that goal within like four hours of work. And that's why I only do part-time work. And also the standard of living here in, in Albuquerque is pretty cheap compared to other parts of the country. And I'm able to take time off to go do auditions and to go do acting jobs in Colorado or here. And I'm able to make the rest of the money doing those jobs, which is amazing. So I would say on average, I make about 20 to $25 an hour. Some people are really good tippers. Others, not so much. Majority of customers that I have will tip me. And I've also been doing this for quite a bit. So I already have preferred customers and regulars who I know will tip well. So how do you get started being a ship shopper? How do you apply? Where do you apply? How long does it take? I think maybe some of the application process has changed, but what I know is that you have to have a valid driver's license, insurance, a vehicle that's newer than 1997, knowledge about produce, frozen meats, the shopping experience, although I think they've been kind of slacking on that because I have witnessed some ship shoppers that don't know what the hell they're doing. Ability to lift 40 pounds, and this is very true, but not really. It's a good workout. And then you have to have an iPhone that is newer than the iOS 10 or an Android that is newer than the 5.1. 
So how do you apply? I'll have a link below on where to go to apply. They'll ask you a couple of questions and I believe in most cases they will ask you to do a filmed interview. They'll give you the questions and then you'll have to film it. And after that, it takes anywhere from a week to two weeks to maybe even longer depending on how many people they wanna hire to get back to you. I would say my tips for the application is really take the time to nail the filmed interview questions. Lighting is key. They want to see your face. So if you can film something with good lighting, I ended up writing out the questions that they ask you. And then I also ended up writing out my answer so that it was easier for me to repeat it. You don't have to memorize it, but it's good to have an idea of what to say in response to the questions. It makes you seem and sound more professional. I would also research a little bit about shipped and research a little bit of like produce and like general grocery things because it's gonna make you sound like you do know what you're talking about. Those are just some, some tips that I suggest. So how do you get started being a ship shopper? So you applied, you heard back, they accepted you. The next thing you're gonna do, and they're always gonna prompt you on the next steps, is probably downloading the app, filling out direct deposit information, tax information, all of that. What I would suggest is just taking a really good look at the app and the training videos that you are required to get through and pass. SHIP does an okay job on training you and preparing you for your first shop, but there are some things that I wish that I would have known before doing my first shop, and I will talk about those. So other than navigating and getting familiar with the app and doing the training videos, what I would also suggest doing is visiting your local stores. So if you are in a place like I am where Target and Smith's are a huge bulk of the orders, we also have other stores such as Bath and Body Works, Party City, Petco, and a couple other ones. I personally just focus on Target and I will only do Smith's orders when I have preferred customers who I know shop there. And I'll let you know, I'm not a fan of Smith's for a couple of reasons. Their aisles are not organized like Target and I end up spending more time and getting frustrated at Smith's. Also, there's an issue in New Mexico and Albuquerque in general. I think it's the Wi-Fi is just so slow. So when you're communicating with customers and sending them pictures and information on out of stock items and in alternatives for them to choose from, sometimes those pictures won't even go through. And it tends to happen at Smith's. So I kind of avoid Smith's at all costs. So I would visit your local stores that you are planning to shop at and kind of study the layout and how the aisles are organized and get familiar with where the dairy products are, produce, meat, because every store is going to have a different layout and also kind of understand how the Wi-Fi is, how far away it is, etc. The next thing I would do is if you have Facebook, I would join the Ship Shopper Lounge and I would also join your local shipped Facebook group. Why this is more important in my opinion is because a lot of times people will post important updates on the local one that you're actually going to want to care about more than the Ship Shopper Lounge. Updates such as what roads are closed, um, if there's an outage at a local Target, if there's been any sort of like violence or emergency or anything related to something that, you know, is really important to, to know. The last thing that I would do before you get started on thinking about your first shop is to download a timestamp app. What I have is called the timestamp camera and you can find it on the app store. I think there's a couple of different ones, but the whole point is for you to be able to, to take a picture of the items at the delivery location and it'll show the time and the address on the picture so that you have a record of what you delivered because you never know. 
Okay, so the next thing that I would focus on is getting a list of equipment and gear ready for your ship shopping experience, your ship shopping career. This is a list of what I have, and of course, it depends on you. You could change it, you could add or, you know, not get similar items, but I will also post links to some of these items if you're interested in getting them. Okay, so what do you wear? At least for the first couple of shops, I would wear the Ship Shopper t-shirt just so that you are comfortable and you have time to get to know employees at the stores or zones that you are working at. And I think there is something about feeling more comfortable doing shops while wearing the gear. You're gonna need comfortable shoes, so this is gonna be anything like just sneakers. But I would also add a pair of shoes that's gonna be weather resistant. So anything that's insulated, keep your feet warm, but also comfortable is a really good idea for days where you're gonna be running around in the rain or snow, depending on where you live. Of course, comfortable and flexible clothes. And I have found a couple of items on the Ship Shopper store that I really like, super cute, pretty affordable, that I've actually purchased, so that's nice. And do take a look at their store because they also have other items that they offer and the prices are actually really good. Anything from fanny packs to trolley bags that are insulated. You can get your card there if you lose it, sanitizing stuff, masks, other clothing items, water bottles. There's a lot of stuff. So you should definitely check it out. I would get trolley bags because I love my trolley bags. They are insulated. So that allows me to place cold and hot items in them. They also provide a really good alternative when I am shopping for bundle orders, meaning I'm shopping for two orders at a time, th three orders at a time. I don't do more than that. I know some people do and bless you. But it's really nice when I have those little orders and I just separate them and it keeps it organized and organization is key. I also use an organizing box. It's an organizer for my car. It's a collapsible multi-compartment car organizer and I just keep it on the passenger seat and it's really nice because I put sharpies, pens, blank thank you notes, candy, rubber bands, clips, tape, scissors, ribbon, sanitizer, extra masks, because we are still required to wear masks here in New Mexico, sanitizing wipes, gum, lotion, chapstick, protein bars, and snacks. Next, I would also invest in a really good water bottle that is insulated. You don't want a water bottle that is just like a clear plastic water bottle because a lot of times, and this happened to me, in the summertime when it was super hot, the water, <laughs> the water would get really hot. The one that I have, and I will also post it there, has a straw and I find that it's easier because when I'm driving I can just take a sip out of it without having to open it up while I'm driving and that's a time saver. A phone holder for your phone, a portable charger, an extra cable to charge your phone to just keep in your car, extra bags, a bag or something dedicated for garbage, so old receipts or anything that's garbage, your, you know, your lunch, any anything that you can just put in there and I just keep in the front on the bottom. A fanny pack, this is a lifesaver. When you're ready and you've been ship shopping for a while, you're really gonna determine if you need this or not, but I think it's such a great idea to have a grocery cart with wheels and something that can hold up to 200 pounds of items, maybe more. It really depends on what you know you're gonna be delivering. We get a lot of cases of water bottles, sodas, small furniture items, other items that are pretty heavy. And I find that this is such a great thing to have, something that can fold up and you can store it in your car. And you can also use for delivering items to apartments. Okay, so the next thing is 
preparing your car for your ship shopping. So like I mentioned, have your organizer ready and filled with all of these items. I use Sharpies to mark out different orders if you need to. If you have a hard time distinguishing between orders that you may have multi-orders, pens for writing out notes, the blank thank you notes I use for customers that I am not able to communicate with who may have had out of stock items that they never approved. So if I have a delivery for a customer that has a landline and it'll tell you and I called them, I introduced myself and on there it says contact me for out of stock items, meaning that they wanna know if an item was out of stock and then they can decide with you if they want an alternative or if they just want you to remove that item from your from the list. So say that I contacted them, no answer. I have a, maybe two items that were out of stock. I chose alternative items for them and I call them again and they don't answer. I leave a voicemail. I don't hear back after giving them a grace period. I have to go to checkout. I will remove those items from their list because they didn't give me permission to spend their money on other items. Some people make those decisions on behalf of them, but I know for me, I'm gonna honor your contact me preference. Always, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to choose an alternative for you because that's your money and I don't, I don't wanna mess with that. So what I'll do is write out on one of those blank thank you notes, dear so-and-so, um, I'm sorry I couldn't reach you via blah, blah, blah. To honor your contact me preference for out of stocks, I removed X item from your list and I have all the rest of these items with you. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Nora. And I will stick that with the clips or rubber bands or whatever I have to get creative on the bag with their name and then just leave it there. These are super helpful too for customers whose phone number is accidentally linked to somebody else's phone number and this does happen. It's rare but it has happened quite a few times for me where I will be texting some complete stranger and they'll be like wrong number and I'm like well I have no way of of getting in touch with this person so I'm just gonna write them a note and I also sometimes put a little candy on there I don't care if they throw it out but I know that it was a good gesture to just put it on there and nine out of ten times I have gotten tips from these customers so like I mentioned I also have um, rubber bands clips tape. The tape I use for items that are boxed up that might have a rip on them. I don't know why, but maybe it's my OCD. I hate seeing a box of like diapers or toys or any other box that has a slit on it. And I know it, it shouldn't really matter because what matters, the items themselves are not damaged, but I just think it looks so bad. And you never know too, because I have had a couple of customers who complained about that. Scissors, again, either to use for the tape or to use for the ribbon, which I also have. And the ribbon is for little special gifts that I may have a customer request. I do something special for someone. And I have had this happen and I, I love them. And they're super generous with their tips. I just love any opportunity to make someone's day special. And so that's why I keep ribbons to just, you know, tie up a, a nice little bow to put on their delivery. Extra masks, um, sanitizer, sanitizing wipes. I use the wipes, especially for the insulated bags because it's, you know, easy to just clean up. Um, also to clean up your hands. But with that, my hands tend to get really, really dry. So I do have lotion to put on. I also have chapstick because it my lips get super dry, especially under the mask. And I have protein bars and just snacks because they're quick things to eat 
on the go and you should always have something to eat. So again, preparing your car for a successful ship shopping career. Organizing your car is key. Make sure that you have your phone holder. Make sure that you have a working cable charger, your portable charger somewhere in your car as a backup. And then either your trunk or the back of your car, depending on what you're driving, should always be clean and neat and free of anything so that your grocery items can go there and you know they don't have a way of falling out or being in a really dirty environment because that's not okay ever. Okay, so now that you have all of those items and you're ready to get started on ship shopping for your first day, I know that you're probably gonna be nervous and this is completely normal. I know that I was because I, you know, you just don't know what you know until you know it. For me, I've always learned by just throwing myself into a situation and it's really scary at first, but then after going through trial and error, then I have like the best crash course on what to do. So how do you ship shop on your first day? Here are my tips. When you're scheduling, I would start out scheduling yourself every other scheduling hour. So on the app, you'll see that it's, for example, 12 to 1 p.m., 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, etc. I would do for your first couple of shops every other hour on. Why? Because you're going to have to get used to the layout of the store and you may get small or medium orders depending on where you're at. So I would claim the smaller orders if you can and you'll be able to see how big they are when they pop up, when they notify you that you have an order to claim. Do be mindful of all of that information. Also, I would stick to one or two zones preferably just one zone as you're starting out. Why? Because again, it's a learning curve and you're gonna be, you're gonna have to just get used to driving around that zone and the stores and you don't wanna put yourself in a situation where you're doing an order at one zone and then the next order is at another zone that's like 30 minutes away or something like that. And you just don't wanna be late. They don't explain this to you, but being late multiple times, and if you fall below their percentage, that can be grounds for being deactivated from the platform. There are instances where they will send you an email and ask you to do a training again and pass with 100% or whatever. But after that, you really can get deactivated. Okay, so also understanding the orders themselves. When you are prompted with a new order, before you're able to claim it, you'll be able to see how many units there are, the person, the delivery time, and then you'll be able to click on the map and it'll show you what store it's located at and how far away the delivery address is at, and also the zone, whether it's prepaid, not prepaid, a drop-off, not a drop-off, delivery only, etc. The amount of money that it says on there is really just an estimate of how much of a base pay you're gonna get paid, and this doesn't include the tips. As well, sometimes it'll say early okay, and those are my favorite because that means that you are able to go shop and deliver that item at any time after you claimed it. Prepaid means that the customer already paid for it and you just have to present a code to the store employee. So like at Target, you'll be able to present that and then you'll just be on your way. If it's not prepaid, it'll give you another code meaning that it's gonna be tax exempt and you'll have to go through a cashier line or a self checkout if you're at Target, just as like a normal shopping day would be. And then at the end, the cashier or you yourself, if you're at a self checkout, will scan the code and then you'll pay with your prepaid shipped card and then you'll follow the prompts to scan the barcode of the receipt and then you'll scan the picture of the receipt itself and then it'll process and then that'll be that. And then it'll also have um, for Target, whether it's a drop-off or not a drop-off. A drop-off meaning, and I'm really glad this, that this exists and unfortunately had to come during this time, which is, you know, 
such a shame, but a drop-off is when you place all of the items next to their door where they're easily accessible and always take a picture and then you text them that the items are there and then you text them the picture. And that's it, you don't have to do any contact delivery. Okay, so communicating with customers, how do you do that? Super easy. Shipt already has these prompt text messages that are auto-generated. Um, so when you get to the store, you hit send text to customer and it'll pop up an already prompted text message. I like to just change a couple of things so that it's it doesn't sound so auto-generated and non-human. And I always add, please, you know, let me know if you need anything else. You start the shop, you go through the list. I always go non-perishable food items or merchandise first. I always end with produce, meats, frozen, last. And then I always take note of what the customer has for out of stock items and it'll say on there, contact me, meaning that they want you to call or text them. If an item is item or couple of items are out of stock, they want to know. And then you want to present them with alternatives that are similar to those items. And a lot of times the app is really good at telling you what other items are similar. A lot of times it won't. I don't know why. What I like to do is while I'm shopping, if something is out of stock, then I quickly look for something that is similar to price, brand, type, whatever that may be. And then I put it in the cart and I go along to the other items. And at the very end, I will send them a text message saying, hey, I am just about done. They are out of stock for this item. And I also make sure that I use the Target app or the kiosk at Target to double check that this item really is out of stock. So I will type it in. Um, if I see on there that it says out of stock, back stock, out of stock, then I know that really is out of stock. But if I see that it's in stock, back stock, is in stock, then I will always ask an employee. And this is where my ship shopping gear comes in hand or not. A lot of employees are really good at helping out ship shoppers. I don't know how it is in other parts, but I know here in Albuquerque, um, I've conducted several studies suggesting that I get more help when I don't have a ship shopper shirt on and they think that I'm just a customer. I don't know why, but in my experience, it has always come true. So I will ask them for the item. If they're like, I don't know what this is, blah, 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 I'll be like, well, it says here that you have it in back stock. Then they go get it. Then great, I don't have to tell the customer that, you know, the item was out of stock. See that it is out of stock, they already checked. Then I have my backup item or items that are similar and then I will text the customer, hey, just about done. These are the items that were out of stock and I will write them out and then I will say, will these alternatives work for you? See pictures and I will send them over pictures of those items with the price tag, even though the price tag doesn't really matter because a lot of times the price is actually a little bit different on their shipped app than it is in store and I don't really know how that works and then I'll wait for them to communicate really good customers will communicate right away and they'll say yes that works or no just take it off of my list and so I will do whatever it is they want me to do and then the same goes for customers who only have a landline I will call them I will read out what the item is, the description of it, the price, whatever. And then if I have a customer that is just not communicative at all, then I will give them some time. I will text them as normally, give them time to respond. If they don't respond within five minutes, I will call them. I will leave them a voicemail explaining everything again. I'll give them five minutes again. If I don't hear anything from them, because I am on a schedule, I will remove those items from their list and just go on and text them again saying, sorry, I couldn't reach you via text or phone call because you want to make sure that you're documenting this. Sometimes they will respond after I've already checked out and they're like, oh, thank you. Or, oh, can you, no, that one's fine. Too late. 
Also, customers who have choose sub, meaning that they trust your judgment, you can choose whatever alternatives are available. Um, those are great, because if you've been doing it for a while, then you know what is similar to the item that was out of stock. That's great, you don't really have to communicate with them. My favorite ones are the ones that have do not sub, so meaning if they don't have this particular item, just remove it, just forget about it, move on. And then at the end of the order, I will always text them, all set, just completed your order with either everything out of stock or just completed your order, heading to checkout now. Cause I want them to know step-by-step step what I'm doing so that they also don't have room to like get any last minute things in, but that's just gonna put me behind. And then I will take note of, you know, if it's prepaid or not prepaid, go through the steps on the app and check out, bag everything accordingly, separate the meat from, you know, dairy, etc. And then I will just load it into my car. If it's multiple orders, I wouldn't focus on that if you're brand new, uh, but eventually you'll have to have a system of how to separate those orders. And then I text them again on my way, ETA, blah, 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 minutes. And then once I get to their delivery address, if it's a drop-off or, you know, it's very rare if it's not a drop-off, contactless delivery, then I'll place their items next to their door, but make sure that they're not, make sure that I'm not blocking their door. Always take a picture and then I text them, all set, have a wonderful evening, have a wonderful day, blah, 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 blah. I'm just super nice and slide completed delivery on the Shipped app. Make sure that you do that because you can forget and then all of a sudden it says that you were late delivering it when you, were, when you weren't, you know you weren't. And then you're on your way to the next one. Just a quick note on shopping for produce, frozen, meat, dairy products, etc. Always make sure that you are shopping by the type of item. Say that it's an order with clothing, shoes, special items that don't have a picture, they just have titles. Frozen pizzas, strawberries, creamer, ground beef. You start out with the special items first, and what I do is type out word for word what the special item is on the Target app or the Target kiosks. I take a picture when I find it, make sure that it's the right one, and if you have any doubts, contact the customer, make sure that that is what they're looking for. I take a picture of it, it'll have the aisle number on there most of the time. I go find those first, then I move on to the clothing, the shoes, and then I move on to the strawberries, the creamer, the frozen pizza. That is my way of doing the order. Make sure you are mindful of the expiration dates, whether an item is broken or damaged or ripped, all of those important things. How do you deal with new customers? It'll have on the app above the customer's name and information whether they are a new customer to shift. And you just treat it normally. What I do is in the intro, I will kind of lay out what the shopping experience is gonna look like. So I will say, hey, so-and-so, welcome to Shipt. I am just about to get started shopping your order from Target. I noticed that your preference for out of stock items is to contact you, so I will do that. In case something is out of stock, please have your phone handy. Let me know if you need anything else, etc. And most of the time they will answer. Sometimes they won't because I, th I think that they still aren't used to what the shipped shopping experience is like. And then I'll go on shopping like normal, but at the end, I will let them know when I'm on my way, how long it's gonna take. And then also, if they suggest a drop off, I will let them know, I will send you a text with a picture of your items once I've arrived at your home. And then I will also say, here's a tip, the final receipt will be in your email or you can get it when you log back into the shipped app have a wonderful day and what this does is it'll prompt them to go back into their email or their ship shopper app and it'll ask them to rate you and it'll ask if they want to give you a tip so that's that's pretty nice so as you know being a ship shopper you have the flexibility to make up your own schedule you're also able to drop orders if you know you're not gonna make it on time for delivery, and it's really important that you do keep your delivery on time rating up. You can always contact Shipped 
headquarters via chat or phone call. They're really nice, they're very helpful, and you can drop an order for whatever reason. And I suggest doing that instead of instead of trying to shop and deliver an order when you know it's gonna be late. With that, understand that you are an independent contractor. You are not an employee of Shipt. You are your own boss. So you handle your own business, meaning you're gonna have to pay taxes when tax season comes around because they don't withdraw any tax earnings from your weekly pay. So just for reference, I would put aside like 20% of your weekly pay and put it into your savings or another bank account, just so you have that money to pay taxes when you're doing taxes. Also keep track of all of your expenses. So gas, mileage, oil change, car maintenance fees, clothing related to your job, snacks, food, gear, anything that is related to your business, keep track of because this may save you hundreds of dollars or who knows how much, depending on what you spent on, when you are filing your taxes. And you are able now to do instant pay, meaning that you can take out pay day by day of your earnings with shipped with just a 49 cent fee. This is awesome in case you are trying to pay a bill and you know it's due tomorrow and you need the money and you can't wait. You can't wait for Friday to get direct deposit. Um, this is an option. If you don't do instant pay, then, then you're able to get your payment normally every week. And then lastly, no one talks about this, but you can be a ship shopper anywhere in the country. So anywhere where shipped is available, you can go travel and be a ship shopper. How great is that? Especially for me that I'm an actor and I'm always on the go between Colorado, here in New Mexico, and eventually LA. You can travel to each metro, just switch up your zone in the app when you are in that city and you can start shopping right away. So my last minute tips, don't take anything personal and deal with an angry customer or frustrating situation in the most professional matter. And know that it's just gonna be temporary. Apologize if that's what's going to relieve the situation, even if you know you didn't do anything wrong. Don't deliver to an address that is not listed on the order itself. Even if the customer says that they made a mistake and they actually wanted that delivery to go to their mother's house, which was, you know, somewhere else, you also risk being deactivated because it's, it's against ship's policy. On that note, you are not allowed to shop for anything that is at Starbucks um, or get them any of the items that are in the prohibited list. Most people tip and they can be really generous. And that's another reason why I love shipped. The lowest tip that I have ever received, I think was like 30 cents. And the biggest tip that I ever received was $60. Also, some people may tip days after a delivery, weeks, months. I've even heard of people tipping like a year after a delivery was done. So you never know. And don't judge a book by its cover, meaning I have had people in working class neighborhoods tip me more money than somebody in a rich neighborhood. Rich people can be pretty stingy. I think my average tip is probably between $20 to 35, um, but it's really nice because the app will prompt the customer to tip you based on a percentage. Sometimes they can pre-tip or like I said, they will tip way after delivery was done. Sometimes in most cases, if you are in the middle of doing a shop and say that they didn't have a particular item, the customer always has the option to cancel the order, which can suck. But at the same time, most of the time, Shipt will pay you about $5 for an order being canceled when you were in the middle of shopping it. Sometimes, it is very rare though, it has happened to me that I will shop an order, I'll go through all of the prompts, and then I'll be ready to process the order, the very last step, 
and then I will get a message that just says the order was canceled. And then there's no way to communicate with the customer because once that order is canceled, the fake number that you have for them will not be able to send them any messages. You won't be able to contact them. And then they're just, both of you are left in the dark. So when that happens, my best advice is to contact Shipped in the chat option and then just let them know and they can let you know uh, when they send the customer an email explaining what happened. Most of the time it'll be a customer's debit or credit card that had an issue with the payment. Sometimes, and again, this is very rare, I'll have an item and its cost will not go through. So I will process an order, say it's like a birthday card, and it'll reject it. So it'll say this item was not able to be processed. Please let the customer know that you had to put it back. If it's a very small item and it doesn't cost very much money and I know that it's going to cause stress and it's going to be potentially a situation where the customer will be really upset, I will just pay for it out of pocket and I won't tell them. I just... I want to bring the magic, right? And nine out of 10 times, maybe it's the karma points, I don't know, they will tip me anyways, and it'll be, you know, more than what I spent. I won't ever spend anything more than $5 on an item. I just won't do it. Then I will let them know, but I haven't had that situation happen. Don't shop with anybody else. I don't know how many times I see especially new ship shoppers with a buddy or even a family and they help them locate the items and then they go on and they, they'll claim multiple orders and then they'll shop them together just so that they can get more money and what that does is take away orders from the actual ship shoppers that are that are certified to do the shopping and it's also against ship's policy. Always treat employees with respect um, they can also file a complaint against you if you aren't doing something correctly or if you have a situation where you have a ship shopper who's really aggressive and mean towards an employee and unfortunately I have seen this more than once. Um, so don't think that because you're an independent contractor and you're your own boss that you are safe from this. Retail is super stressful, especially during the holidays. It just any time when you have, you know, all of these customers who are just mean and vicious and entitled, and then on top of that, you have a ship shopper who's also acting the same way, mm -mm, I don't think so. And also, they're gonna start to see you a lot and they will get familiar with you and it's a really good idea to build rapport with them. So that way, if you're not wearing shipped gear, they will know who you are, but also you're gonna have your shipped order with you on your phone and you're always gonna tell them if you have a shipped audit. So that's not a big deal. Shopping bundles are great for making bonuses and SHIP does have a couple of bonuses that they throw out every once in a while, especially during the holidays and it can be really lucrative. Just have a good strategy for them. You can also make up your own bundles once you have the experience and shop a couple of different orders at once. Bundles do tend to pay less than the individual orders. So just make sure if you are doing your own bundles with individual orders that they are close enough to each other and not like 30 minutes apart or across town. And lastly, not all ship shoppers are going to be friendly and excited to see you at the store. I know that the ship shopper lounge has wonderful and beautiful stories of friendships being formed, but um, at least in my metro area, that's not the case. I have had a couple of experiences where you know I recognize who the ship shoppers are, and I at first said hello and you know tried to start a conversation with them, and they just they were not having it. In fact, one of them told me to to leave their territory even though I've been doing shipped for almost three years and they had just started. That's all I can think of for now. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe, like, and comment. I am a very, very small YouTube channel and I am hoping to grow. And I also would love to know if you want me to continue making these types of videos about shipped because there's so much that I can talk about. But like always, I am so happy that you stopped by and I hope to see you soon.